Hello everybody I'm Suji Bala and I'm going to present my seminar topic on the novel Seize the Day written by Saul Bellow Saul Bellow was a Canadian American writer he was born on 10th June 1915 at Lachine Quebec Canada he was awarded Pulitzer Prize the Nobel Prize for Literature and the National Medal of Arts he is the only writer to win the National Book Award for fiction 3 times He was died on 5th April 2005 at Brooklyn, Massachusetts, US. Teens. Isolation. Tommy Wilhelm is isolated from his family and the community around him. Trapped in an unhappy marriage, he has left his wife Margaret and his sons. He misses his children because he is in Manhattan and they were in Brooklyn and he worries that they are becoming alienated from him under his wife's influence in the residential hotel the gloriana wilhelm to isolate it he frantically tries to figure a way out of his financial crisis wilhelm feels isolated in the modern world because he is an idealist living in a world of cynicism Dr Tamkin recognizes Wilhelm's idealism describing him as a man who is humble for life who wants to feel and live Wilhelm finds cynicism and he is disgusted much of the world's business too much falsity the sense of isolation is almost the inner dialogue of the entire novel father and sons The novel mostly portrays the absence of fathers and the needs of sons. Wilhelm's own father, Dr. Adler, refuses to fill the fatherly role either financially or emotionally. His father lived in an entirely different world from his son. He begs his father for sympathy and kindness more than his money. Wilhelm's father is not only emotionally unavailable but also cold and critical. His father blames him for not being like himself and he rejects him as an embarrassment. In the absence of his father, he turns to another father figure, Dr. Tamkin. At first, Tamkin helped and he showed sympathy to Wilhelm, but taking advantage of Wilhelm's vulnerability, Tamkin betrays him, ultimately abandoning him just as much as Dr. Adler has. Wilhelm was so sad that he too was separated from his sons. materialism the materialism of modern urban life creates the pressure to chase after financial success and pressure materialism is a source of pride and identity it takes a number of forms one of which is a salacious interest in exact incomes dr adler never misses an opportunity to brag his son once earned five figures mr pearl digs to find out the real amount Dr Tamkin claims some men make 5 10000 a week trading commodities. He boasts about selling a lawsuit to a Wall Street lawyer for $20,000. Rubin, the employee of the Gloriana's friend desk who dressed very well, Rubin noticed the clothing of others too, commenting Wilhelm's shirt. He wants to know if it came from Saks an upscale department store. Dr Adler is said to be a snappy dresser. clothing projects the appearance of material success analysis chapter 1 chapter 1 introduces readers to the main character of the novel tommy wilhelm the author portrays wilhelm as a middle-aged man with bad decision that is making skills a habit of flying and under pressure to meet expectations of financial success Wilhelm has a history of ignoring his better judgment to choose a path he has actually accurately assessed as a poor one. Wilhelm lies to cover his failures. He tells his parents Venice has assured him of success in Hollywood when really the casting agent backs off after seeing Wilhelm on screen. He even lies about the cost of a shirt that was really a gift in order to seem more successful. He is a man under pressure and this chapter tells the main pressure about financial crisis. Wilhelm has no job and needs money but also feels the need to meet his father's expectation of success. The larger societal pressure to achieve financial success and its effects on the individual is the energy that the author drives a whole part in the novel. Wilhelm is painfully aware that his father is ashamed of him and he knows that he has failed to live up to his father's expectations. 
although dr adler is in a position to help his son financially he won't help or bother about that in the absence of the fatherly assistance wilhelm turns to surrogates like maurus venus and dr tamkin these two men offer some sort of help to him the conflict between father and son draws on the author's experience with his father whom he often fought about money Wilhelm tries to break free of the distorting oppression of social expectations when he is younger. Casting off his family issues and names is a first layer of the character. The second layer of the character which comes from social pressures of envy and greed appear in Wilkie. The third layer of his character Wilhelm forced to wear a mask of politeness and controlled artificial society. Chapter 2 The author develops the character of Dr Adler in chapter 2 while at the same time revealing the character of Wilhelm through his father's eyes. From Dr Adler's perspective, Wilhelm is unhealthy, dependent upon pills, a bad driver and driven by pride to neglect his responsibilities. He doesn't understand Wilhelm and is irritated by nearly everything his son does, so he avoids being alone with him. Dr Adler is cold and critical his criticism of Wilhelm reveal another side to Wilhelm's character Margaret Wilhelm's wife embodies society's expectation that everyone should have money she forwards the her bills to Wilhelm despite the fact he doesn't have the ability to even pay his own rent he resents the social expectation that causes anyone without money to feel shame Readers who may have doubted Dr Tamkin's confidence in his ability to play the commodities market have more reason to questions in the old man after reading chapter 2. Both Dr Adler and Mr Pearl seem to doubt his stories about his inventions finding them laughable and Dr Adler states clearly Tamkin is not to be trusted. It is unclear whether Tamkin is even a real doctor of any kind. The author ends the second chapter with a bit of a cliffhanger. Writers use this technique to build suspense and keep the audience interested in learning more. The author ends the chapter in the middle of the action with the hero in some sort of peril and with foreshadowing danger. The author creates suspense by showing readers how desperate Wilhelm's for his money and suggesting it is likely in the wrong hands. The chapter ends with the thought that the market will open soon and for Wilhelm to stay financially the price of lard had to rise today. Readers will have to keep reading to find out if Wilhelm will be saved or ruined by the day's trading. Chapter 3. Chapter 3 returns to the theme of father and son. The author shows his father and son as completely unable to understand one another. Dr Adler can't understand why Wilhelm doesn't just pull himself up by his bootstraps. He sees his adult children as leeches who who drain his life blood that is his money if he let them. Wilhelm can't understand why his father refuses to help his own son. Wilhelm and Dr Adler can't communicate because they can't understand each other. They are talking about the past and it results in lack of understanding upsets them both. The ch- third chapter is full of language of suffocation and drowning. Wilhelm is being pushed under by the pressures of society and the rush of city life. In preparing to tell his father of his problem, he drew and held a long breath as if preparing to dive under water. Margaret's demands are suffocating him. His father's lack of sympathy makes him struggle to breathe and he feels like a ball being pulled out by the tide. Logically, he refuses to take his father's advice to take hydrotherapy. The author shows money as a divisive force. Money enslaves some but frees others. Money separates Wilhelm from his father's love and approval. He believes money makes the difference in their relationship. If he had money, his father would be proud of him. Money divides Dr. Adler from his adult children. It also divides Wilhelm from his mistress. Chapter 4 The title of the novel is taken from Tamkin's advice to Wilhelm in Chapter 4. Tamkin rambles on about the past and present as he discusses why he works for love, not money. He urges Wilhelm to focus on the present and to seize the day. The advice serves Tamkin's end as a manipulator because he uses it to focus Wilhelm's attention on risk taking rather than on future consequences or wisdom learned from past experiences which might prevent him from doing as Tamkin wishes. Wilhelm has already expressed the idea that he inevitably make poor choices. 
In chapter 4, Wilhelm recalls he had an inkling that investing with Tamkin is an inescapable decision. He has sensed a flavor of fatality in Dr. Tamkin which suggests Tamkin's influence over Wilhelm is not only irresistible but also potentially fatal. Chapter 4 cements the fact that Tamkin is a fraud. The stories of his patients are simply too ridiculous to be true and even Wilhelm finds them to be so. Wilhelm is miserable when he thinks of the trust he put in, but he still seems eager to believe Tamkin's assurance that ultra-modern electronic bookkeeping machinery will prevent him from losing any of his money. Knowing Tamkin has misrepresented his skills as a psychologist and trader serves to add suspense. Wilhelm's anxiety about the trading day and eagerness to get to the bookerage office contrasted with Tamkin's uncurned concern and leisurely breakfast builds Wilhelm's frustration. He is ready to find out what is happening to his money. Tamkin, on the other hand, acts completely carefree. Wilhelm has to sit and wait for Tamkin, forced to listen to him drone on and on with one realistic story after another about people Wilhelm doesn't know. Wilhelm's frustration grows as the morning wears on. Chapter 5 the author is a well-known Jewish writer who most often writes about male Jewish protagonists. The very first time being Jewish comes up in Tamkin's suggestion that Wilhelm encounters anti-Semitism as a salesman. The second is in Rappaport's expectation that Wilhelm will attend services for Yom Kippur, a Jewish holiday. Wilhelm's response speaks to his experience as a modern American Jew, somewhat removed from the region of the old country. His main association with temple is his mother and his conflict with his father even exp- extends to his Jewish identity. Wilhelm has never been able to be the right kind of Jew for Dr. Adler just as he has disappointed his father in every other way. Wilhelm finally sees a ray of hope in the price of rye only to be frustrated by Tamkin again. The oppressive force of the social expectations to have money is gradually crushing and suffocating Wilhelm. In the city, the people have no common language to even communicate with each other, operating from behind their mask of false politeness. Everyone is rushing around trying to get money or increase what they have. Wilhelm finds the business stressful and he thinks he could find peace in one day he could escape the city. He plans to get out of New York as soon as he can, longing for tranquility and freedom. Chapter 6 when Wilhelm returns to find the price of both lard and rye was dropped, as the readers have anticipated it, it is a pitiful scene. The author shows Tamkin is the worst kind of charlatan and Wilhelm has been duped. All the signs have been there but somehow the chapter still packs an emotional punch. The author uses pathos and appeal to a reader's sense of pity for Wilhelm to create impact of the chapter. Chapter 6 reveals one of the author's weakness, that is his depiction of women. Wilhelm wonders why the elder women are in the diner instead of at home caring for grandchildren as they have no right to occupy public space. Tamkin describes women as manipulative castrators out to oppress men. The only female characters of note in the novel are Wilhelm's wife, who keeps him in a loveless marriage and drains him financially. In a novel about the struggle of urbanities to find meaning in modern life, readers may find the author's exclusion of women from that quest in any meaningful way to be problematic. Chapter 7 The climax of the chapter comes in the final chapter in Wilhelm's cathartic lease of emotion. All of the action and suspense of the novel has been building towards his collapse. When he finally lets go on his artificial mask, Wilhelm is able to express his anguish in sobs. All of his money and sense of control gone, all appeals for help rebuffed. Wilhelm's artificial armor has been stripped away and he is able to move towards the consummation of his heart, ultimate need of self-expression. The climax of the novel cleanses Wilhelm of repressed feelings and invites reader to do same. Interestingly, Chapter 7 includes several Christian references. Dr. Alder likens Wilhelm's plea for help to a demand to carry a cross and uses the name of Christ as a curse to reject his son. Even turning his back on his son a reference to crucifixion of Jesus when God the Father abandons the son to his death by crucifixion. The author returns to the theme of fathers and son in the final chapter. Wilhelm begs his father for financial help but he would be grateful for just a word from his dad.
He seeks compassion and sympathy rather than money from Dr. Adler, who remains disapproving and then hostile towards his son. Dr. Adler says that he would rather die than help Wilhelm. The care of his son is what grieves Wilhelm most when faced with his own financial ruin. All the fathers in the novel fail their sense, however, regardless of their intentions. Dr. Adler thinks he is doing the best thing by forcing Wilhelm's struggles to cope alone and Wilhelm struggle to provide for his children whom he loves. All the sons in the novel are functionally left without a father's care. Thank you.